welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. I'm Patrick Cristiano, your host, the publisher of TheaterLife.com, a website for theater buffs covering Broadway and off-Broadway theater. And I have a really cool guest today, a photographer who is rapidly becoming a good friend of mine, Bob Tabor, who has an extraordinary exhibition of his work going on at the White Room Gallery uh, on Main Street in Bridgehampton. It's 2415 Main Street in Bridgehampton. Welcome, Bob. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me to be part of your show today. I'm, I'm on it. Oh, it's my Thank pleasure. You. It's my pleasure. It, it, was, I, it was just meant to be an inspirational. I, I got this PR piece about this show, and I saw this magnificent image of a, 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 the moon. You know, mm -hmm. and then I read the, the quote. That I, I just want to share this because it, it's pulled me in. It's a uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson, mm -hmm. you know, because you worked on this right. PR material. So for every minute you spend angry, you lose 60 seconds of happiness. Ralph Waldo Emerson, and that's a quote from 150 years ago. But you can't look at the moon and be angry. It's no. impossible. No. It inspires everyone, you know. I, if you were a good student and you still remember your science lessons, you know everything that it does and, and being in history and sages coming through time and using it as calendars and things like that, but the moon is inspirational. There's an inner meaning that calls out to people and I believe it creates a harmony and I look to the moon when I'm in need of solace, when I, when I have to find myself and have those inner thoughts come out. And this year, I really wanted to gain that connection again with the moon. And for the past year, I've been working on basically just shooting the moon, just photographing it. And uh, I think the, the, the nicest moon to shoot is the full moon because it's brightest and it's the shape that, that uh, appears to be overwhelmingly beautiful and light up the water around it. But they're incredible. And we've had some incredible moons right now because just last week we had the, the, the rising moon that was like extraordinary. Right. And, and during the past year we had super moons and, and the strawberry moon. And of course, the harvest moon, they're all bright. And whenever I photograph a moon, it's not just the moon itself. It's over water, which to oh. me is rebirth. I, I, I love it. I and love cleanliness. It and it's all together. Now, your exhibition at the White Room is August 9th through the 20th, is that correct? Uh, the 8th through the 20th. 8th through the 20th. And, and we're going to have, you're having a reception. The reception is Thursday evening, which is tomorrow. So everybody that wants to go to the reception. Please. Uh, please. <laughs> I just want you to see it. I just want it to touch you and, and feel what I feel when I look at it. So, so let, let's share some of the images yeah. from the show with the viewers. Jody, could, could you show us some of them? So what is this one? This is a, These do are, they have names? No, I never name any of my photography. And the reason why I don't name him is because I want you to write the script. Okay. I want to present a visual to you, a concept. I'm an advertising person. Right, 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 right. But I want you to write the script. I want you to bring it into your environment and you have that connection so it becomes meaningful to you. It's not just something hanging on your wall. I want you to look at it and feel a moment of intensity. Of now, can, now, now, the, now are the, these, are they all shot in the same place? No. It's all shot in the Hamptons. They're shot over the ocean. And they also are shot over the bay. Now, when you, do, like, what, like this, will you, will you label where this one is? This one was shot uh, in... Um, East Hampton, I forgot the name of the bay. Uh, it's Northwest Woods. So you don't label them on the, on no, the piece? So, no, but the, no. But it's just something you, you remember. And, and what's interesting about this one, a lot of people ask, that was a strawberry moon. And the intensity of the moon, and it was, of course, a full moon, the sky lit up. But before the sky lit up, the water itself was a hot August burning heat wave day and the water 
was red and captured the sun down as the moon came up. And it just kept the redness in the water. And then the moon just lit it up. Now, would you, you don't use any colors, filters, no. or it's just, it's all. This is all lit. I, I, it's extraordinary. So that's just natural light. This is all natural. Everything is natural. Again, this is a, a, a rough one. You know, we forget what the moon does to the earth, the way it pulls upon it as, and, and has, you know, a scientific. Well, well the, the, the moon itself is one of the, in, one of the uh, focal points of astrology. Of would be why it moves and how it pulls on, right. on the different planets and the, all the waters. And, and exactly. All that. And remember, the moon is, its light is reflected from the sun. The moon doesn't let out its own light. The sun, it's a yin and yang. The moon reflects the sun's light, and that's what lights up the evening. So interesting. It's a fa fascinating sign. It's fascinating. Now, you, you, we, when we were chatting just a little while ago, we, I, because, well, let me just see how much time we, we could talk about all this stuff. But let's let's talk about how you came to photography because you're. Um, an advertising person. I was an advertising person. Uh, I worked for large agencies in New York City. I was an executive creative director at some agencies. I did Alka-Seltzer in the 80s. I did then teen ice freezing over gums in, in the 2000s. I uh, worked on a lot of national accounts. And as the field was changing, my love and uh, respect for photography was increasing, and I worked with the best photographers in the country, as well as the best directors. That was part of my job. So you learned just from watching? Watching, and just absorbing everything. And, you know, being the creative director, I have to choose the final photograph right. or cut before it goes to the client. So I was the judge at that point. I mm -hmm. was the critical mm -hmm. judge. And also, I was the person that thought up the idea. So I had to see if they were true to my idea. Yeah, and exactly, exactly. So it was a, a double role in advertising. And then I saw towards the end of uh, uh, my uh, advertising career, my love for uh, photography. Uh, for my 60th birthday, my wife took me to uh, Sonoma and I fell in love with the lighting. And I always had a camera and always played around family-wise. Right, right, right. But I never wanted to do anything on weekends because during the week I was doing all of right, the, right. the work. Uh -huh. And she bought me a point-and-shoot, simple, digital camera. But you were 60 years old, so you are only doing about five years, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Bless you. I'll, when can I go back again? And uh, I just, from that moment on, I started to photograph. And I now, said, were you out of advertising at that point? No. So you were still working in advertising yes. when you started, began your... Yes. And how long did you work in advertising before you kind of said, goodbye, advertising, I'm going to... It was a, at least another uh, six to eight years. I, uh, in fact, while I was still working for an agency, I produced two coffee table books of my work both on horses. And so horses were your first... You, and you're... Well, let's... let's, let's I'll show the couple of your horse pictures that are in that. Can we have those? Now, this, this is, is in the show, horse. too. Yes, this is a gypsy horse that's in the show. Uh, shot this at Two Trees Stables in uh, Bridgehampton. Oh, it's incredible. And this one as well. I try to capture, I spend a lot of time when, I, when I'm photographing horses with the horse. They get to know me. And, I, and I, I love the animal and looking into their eyes, although representation today doesn't have any close-up <laughs> of eyes. But I, I, I just have that connection, and they're so smart. They're so wonderful to be with. I think those are the only two horse pictures we have. But let's tell our viewers the, the story. Of your, you've, start, you've got these coffee table books going, right? I got the coffee table. Well, at that time, you when didn't. I started with the horses, I didn't. Okay. And uh, I uh, was shooting vineyards, and I was shooting some of the vineyards from like Sonoma, Sonoma mm -hmm. a continuation at uh, 
at the, the Bridge Hampton right. uh, Vineyards. And I was photographing, and uh, I saw this gentleman riding a horse through the, the, the vines and going to a stable over the ridge, and that was Two Trees Stable. And I went down there, and I never knew it existed, right. even though I'm living in the Hamptons. I know, there's so many things you've discovered yes, constantly. Yes, yes. We have it so lucky, we're grateful. And I, I started to photograph some of the horses. I asked for permission and all of that. And then I went back to Manhattan. I used to come out here on weekends and uh, blew them up, brought them back the following weekend, went back to the stable to show the stable manager that I'm not a crazy person <laughs> photographing horses. You have a serious and purpose. And I put them out on the floor and, you know, said, what do you think? And she said, you would, you know, do things like this for some of our clientele. And as I did that, a gentleman walked in who was ready for his riding lesson and uh, sort of work on the floor. And he said, who, who did this? And I said, I did. He said, well, that's my horse. And I, oh. I, I became defensive. <laughs> and I said, oh, he's beautiful. Oh, he loved it. <laughs> yes. He said, I, I love it. Is it for sale? And I, you know, I never thought of that. And I said, I, I guess so. You know, I was stammering. <laughs> he says, well, I, love it. I, I can't talk now. I got a... Uh, a lesson uh, that I have to go to, and he starts to walk out, and he said to me, uh, you know, better yet, y you should meet my boss, and uh, we'll get together. And he's continuing to walk, and being the type of Brooklyn advertising person I am, right. I went, who's your boss? <laughs> and he said, Ralph Lauren. <laughs> and he was did, 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 did that knock you over with a feather? Yes, it did. And this was Mark Reynolds, who was one of the uh, uh, designers at the Mark Reynolds uh, showroom designs and, and uh, room designer. And they got me together and we got in touch and they sponsored my first book. And uh, So that's how your coffee table books came that's to That's how it started. And then your sh photographs started to appear in the Ralph Lauren stores? They appear all around the world. Isn't that unbelievable? On four continents. And they're there, and I get calls from people who travel, and they say, do you have a piece of work in, uh, in you know, Hungary or this temple? And I go, I guess so. <laughs> I mean, you know, did they say Bob Tabor? And, and it's just, it's wonderful. And I, and I really appreciate it. That was the start. That was the start of it all. It was the bridge that I needed to go from one to another. So it, it, it really was. So you know, what's interesting about your story, and which, which, which really excites me, because I really believe in destiny. And, and this story is such a destiny moment that is so clear. You know, you're starting to do this, and you're being drawn into doing it, and then everything about the universe supports you, and you get the, you know, the big, because you're doing things that are feeding your spirit. Yes. Well, I think, you know, I can't say advertising is, well, is the, is the, the creative the, person, <laughs> but they are. And if you see the people who are in advertising who are out here uh -huh. now, they're either antique designers or, you know, dealers right. and writers and, you know, they go on to other things. And I think that that's what's so wonderful. It was, there was always something there. When I was a, a student at the School of Visual Arts, my first endeavor was to really be a fine artist. I used to paint and had a group show and a, and a solo show at Visual Arts. And then uh, my father took me for a walk one day and told me you know, that I, have painter? A, I have a bad <laughs> habit. And I said, what's that? He says, eat five times a day. You're going to have to support yourself <laughs> and you should do something else. So the following day I went into school and said, what can I do in, in the art world and make money? And they said, I went to advertising, and I went into advertising and still continued to paint until I just didn't have the time to do that anymore. Right, you can't. You, you, to, be, you, to be really good at one thing, you have to give it all exactly. your focus, and you know that's why when you shift, to, it makes it easier to focus. But let's talk about what's interesting about your photographs of horses, that how you, you don't use a background. No. I, I want... Tell the viewers I, why. It's very I interesting. want the viewer to connect with the spiritual feeling that the horse gives out. I love it. And the background is if I was selling it's a real estate, it takes it away. My second book was called Polo, Equine Warriors. 
and it's all polo. And I crap the, the heads off the polo players at times mm -hmm. and forget the background. And it's the horse and the muscles and the feeling of, of the star of the, of the polo match. Right, right, right. The horse. Yeah. <laughs> and, yes, you know, yes, and, yes. and not drinking champagne and enjoying the moment, but seeing the, this athlete, it's, this horse is, is it's unbelievable. And, and I've always taken out the background. I've always stayed with the simplest of aspect to convey to the viewer. I never name my photographs. They're all numbered because I want the viewer to write the script. Now, are a lot of the horses we saw are all black and white. Are they, are they all black and white? No, they're in color as mm -hmm. well. Okay. Yes. I thought they must be sweat. Yeah. yeah. The, the popular ones are black the, and white. White on, the white horse on white. Mm -hmm. uh, it, people love that. And what's nice about it is I only print eight, an edition of eight in each image. But each one is individually printed to size of what the purchaser wants. Oh, wow. So there are no two the same no size. No two, unless someone asks for them. Yes. So uh, the smaller size I, I've, I print is 48 inches, but I really don't like that. Uh -huh. I like to go bigger. So it could be 60 inches and another one 12 feet wide. And I, I just, I don't want to, I'm watching the time is what I'm yes, looking because okay. I can't see it, but I can't see it behind your shoulder. I have to look over there. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I want to get you to, to, to the catalog. The, the whole, whole route, the, is, this, is it in this catalog or the new catalog? The, uh, in this catalog, this is the moon catalog, and it the, will be at the show at the White Room. The, uh, Ruthie Rosenberg, who's a mindful uh, uh, speaker, and she wrote the background of what the moons have been through history and religion and made that connection. And what I, what I really love is I turn to the moons, like I mentioned earlier, for inspiration. It's something I tried many, many years before I, I, I did this. Again, I simplify things by cropping tight in, making it a graphic image in telling the story that I'm trying to tell by having the moon and the water in your face. Mm -hmm. I'm not into the vista. Right, right. There's fantastic photographers and they'll shoot vistas and they're in Hawaii and they're doing it. I want that story. I want you to look at that image and connect. I want you to feel something. I want you to pull something up from your inner spiritual feeling. Well, your images Amazing. did that for me because I, I was drawn to it instantly. So you accomplished what you, with me, you did anyway. And well, I, 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 I do that with everyone. It's, it's just that, that's odd. That's the connection, and it's not odd if it stays in my house. It's odd if you bring it into your house and you work on it as much as I do by sitting and looking at it. And that's why I won't give it a name. I won't tell you the background. You write the script. You put it together. Make it part of your life. It's wonderful. I love it. <laughs> now you also are do. T tell us about these things because this is something brand new that you just started doing. Yes, uh, um, everything is is uh, uh, printed on archival paper. And this is and metal. This is metal. And, and I mean, indestructible, right? Indestructible. This is fabulous. You can put that it in so a cool, cool house. <laughs> it won't change color. It won't scratch. It won't warp, and each photograph at the show can be ordered either in metal or uh, putting it behind plastic, plexiglass, or framed. I love these little 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 things. Are there. fabulous. It's they all capture again the mood, and that's that's what it's all about. That's what makes it odd. <laughs> Well, these, these these are really extraordinary. Now, you also, it's almost like it's a full circle moment because you were intrigued by the moon a long, long time ago. I've, I've always, I've well, always you never had didn't a connection. It. No, I, I didn't, but I've always had a connection. I mean, to look at, a, at the moon, and whether I was driving out here on a Friday evening before I moved out here permanently, 
it was like you everyone stops and says look at the moon look how beautiful it is look how large it is look, and you, you can't pass it. No, you can't. It, it, it you becomes can't. like that moment. And did you see the rising moon on yeah, last night? Yeah. I was there with the dog. It was like it's extraordinary. It's unbelievable. <laughs> and it just got better and better the yes, higher it went yes, in the sky. Yes. <laughs> and, and photographing these things, I'm out there for a long time. I want to see it rise. And I want to see it basically where it's setting. And I want to see the reflection on the ocean or the bay. So the time is there. And... I might shoot 1,500 photographs, but I'll walk away with one. Out of 1,500 sometimes? One. And that's the you one. You encourage me because I always, I always wonder why I have to shoot so many pictures to get a decent one. <laughs> so I'll just keep shooting more pictures. Yeah. Thank you. Keep on shooting. <laughs> the key is being able to choose that one, and that's the connection. What it is, I can't say, but the connection is right here. Oh. And you say, that's it. Everything else is wrong. And I put the others away. And like I said, I only print eight. Each one is an individual size of what you would want to be. So would you, like it. if you do one of these images, would, would you do some large and some in metal too maybe? So only eight of them? It would be, and after it you would eight, be eight of part of the eight if mm -hmm. you want in metal. Right. right. But they would never be this small. Okay. And I would never do anything on the 48 inches. This uh, was basically test prints. Oh, they, so, so they will have to be 48 small. inches. Minimum. Minimum. Mm -hmm. Hopefully 12 feet. <laughs> now, you have also, we have, we have about under five minutes. You also have been doing something where you've used your photograph huge like that as a, the centerpiece for an environment almost. Is that yes, what, yes. What, what, how, well, you know, out here, the homes have big white We walls. should have had some pictures of this, but we didn't. Uh, I didn't think about it's it. It's in there. It's in yeah. the book. Uh, the big white walls. And I feel that no matter what furniture you have, and the homes are lovely, and designers are working on it, and in fact, most of my clients are the designers that right. come to the me. Right, the designers and, yes. by art. <laughs> but to put a graphic image on a wall that's 10 feet wide, 8 feet wide, speaks for itself. You walk in, you go, boom, that's it. And that's what I'm trying, that's the story that I want you to walk away with. Like, what a lovely home. And did you see that f picture of uh, the moon? <laughs> it's breathtaking. <laughs> That's what I feel it is, and and that's what I try to do. Well, you've accomplished it, I think. I haven't seen the environments. I saw the pictures, uh, and uh, we didn't think to bring any for our guests. No. But, well, next time, you'll have to come when you have another exhibition. I and, would love that. And uh, we'll, we'll get together and do something further. That would be fabulous. Uh, but thank you. It, it's, it, thank you so much for I, I love the catalog and everyone if anyone's aware of the show come come tomorrow if you can't come tomorrow come you know we'll be up for you know uh, until the twentieth right and uh, the, the the pictures are wonderful Bob thank you so much and please please come tomorrow I'm and spend coming. some time with me I enjoy <laughs> talking to you oh you're my you're ditto ditto it was just a quick connection is what it was and, and it was meant to be it was meant to be I like destiny thank you for coming